We're going to list the contents of the directory from the previous video. We made these two .NET modules and combined them into a single assembly with main class .exe. I can run main class, not CS, sorry, main class .exe. I can execute that. And sure enough, both modules uh, uh, give their corresponding output. And here's the original code where we said me first module .hello, me second module .hello. I probably should have called these classes. These are actually classes, whereas the modules are the actual .NET files. So if you recall in main class.exe we had this code here, but then the individual modules, they had their own hellos. In fact, I actually brought me first module down here. In fact, let's just bring it up, control L to delete all those lines. But me first module basically was like this and it had a hello and we're good to go. Now, I made the method public because otherwise I wouldn't be able to access the method like so. However, I didn't put any visibility on the classes. I don't want to point that out explicitly. If I don't put any visibility on the classes, what's the default visibility? Is it public, private, protected, internal? Pause the video and think about it. Come back. Well, I'll give you a little hint. It can only be public or internal. Okay, all too often I ask that question and, and you might have thought private. All right. well, I, I can't put private out here. Private is for within classes, not on specific types outside in the uh, in the main scope here. I was almost about to say namespace, but we could put a namespace out here. It, the, the default is internal. Okay, I cannot say private. In fact, if I try to say private, let's just say private, build this, I'll say, hey, elements defined in a namespace cannot be explicitly declared as private, protected, or internal. If I put protected out here, well, hopefully that just doesn't make any sense. It's protected? It's, it's, we're not even, even if I could inherit from it, it's, uh, I, I inherit stuff in here, I don't inherit stuff out here, so protected doesn't make any sense. All right, the only ones that do are public and internal, and the default is internal. All right, now what does internal mean? It means not visible outside the assembly. Okay, it's like private uh, for an assembly. And now we're kind of talking about component-oriented programming. All too often we, we do object-oriented programming, which is good, but then we take it up, if we take it up a level and we start making assemblies and we tie assemblies together, we could think of an assembly as a component at, the, at that level. We make all these assemblies. And what's visible outside the assembly? What's not? What's helper? methods and classes and types what's what's what what the helpers are the internal stuff to the assembly and then the public stuff is the interface to the assembly not a c sharp interface that turns blue when i when i type type interface but the public stuff is in is the interface to the assembly anyway i ramble since let me let me bring the command prompt up here again and remember our assembly that we created is made up of these three files right here and me first module it, it was internal but however since they're all part of the same assembly I am able to access me first module class uh, from this executable okay as far as net is concerned it doesn't really even care that these are three files it just cares that it's one assembly and so certainly I can call me first module dot hello and we see that we get the output and it compiles just fine no problem All right? but then what if I try to make separate assemblies okay first thing I want to do I'm gonna erase this this executable there so erase main class dot exe and clear the screen list the contents of the directory it is gone we no longer have that assembly we still have the modules which we can put in other assemblies so let's do just that c sharp compiler slash add module me first module dot net module me second module uh, me second me second <laughs> module dot net module and I'm going to make a, a DLL file, meaning I just don't want an ent entry point. I don't want a main. Right? In fact, I have to say library, not DLL. Sorry. DLL is for the uh, IL assembler. And then the, I think that's about it. Let me hit enter. Oh, and of course, I have to specify the out file. So slash out, call it me, DLL.DLL. Hit enter. And good, we compiled just fine. All right. Do you know the notice? Notice. I didn't. I didn't specify any CS files. Generally, I specify the CS or the C-sharp file. I didn't specify any here. I just said, hey, 
throw these two modules together in an assembly and call that assembly me dll dot dll so i can actually say ildasm slash out me dll dot dll or sorry <sighs> late night moo dot text and i'm going to call it me dll dot dll i'm going to I want, I want to disassemble this thing and then moo.txt. Let's look at moo.txt. Do you see anywhere? Do you see anywhere? And look, this is a very short file. I can scroll up and down. I can, I can almost make the entire file visible in the recording area for you. Almost. Almost. Do you see any code? All right, I see, I see a lot of metadata here. All the dots, remember the dots mean metadata. Go review the reflections, attributes and reflection video if necessary. And these are just comments. I, I can just get rid of comments, can I? And uh, I don't see any code. I don't see any code. This is an assembly, though. I can tell it's an assembly because I have this dot assembly without the extern keyword hanging out here. Remember, the extern says I'm referencing other assemblies. This is an assembly in itself. What I've highlighted here is the assembly manifest. And, and again, it says, hey, we have these .NET module files. It's part of us, and it's also a module itself. Remember, every assembly are single file modules. We are generally unaware of that, but sure enough, they are. And Anyway, so this is an assembly. All right, let me, don't save to that. Let me CLS and list the contents of the directory. I'm going to erase the moo stuff. And let's list the contents again. So now he's, we have an assembly again. All right. No no main in this case, but it's still an assembly. All right. And inside that assembly is the the first module class. It's hiding out in this module file there. And then we have the second module class. It's hanging out in this module. But the entire assembly is the combination of all three of these. And the only purpose of this DLL file is to hold that manifest and say, hey, I am an assembly and I'm made up of these .NET module files. Well, now that it's an assembly by itself, let's see if we can use that assembly. Let's see if we can reference that assembly. In fact, we have some perfectly good code right here that tries to use the code inside that assembly. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to say C Sharp compiler slash reference. That's what the slash R stands for. I want to reference me DLL dot DLL and I want to compile main class dot cs and let's just make sure we save it so the star there goes away uh, this time I'm, I'm defining an input file cs before when we created this dll file we didn't need to do that we hit enter and it says hey hey buddy you're trying to cross assembly lines you're trying to access stuff inside the assembly that's internal right can't touch this no good all right, so so there's there's another concept to drill into your head is that internal means visible within the assembly, and an assembly can be be made up of several files. We've done that before, and and sure enough, within this assembly, if I had any code inside this assembly that wanted to use or access or invoke these these uh, internal classes, they certainly could. However, in this case, where I'm trying to say, hey, compile the CS file that's hanging out behind this line. Let me, let me get rid of that. Compile this CS file right here and see if it can cross into this assembly boundary and access internal stuff. And the compiler's like, no. No, this is internal to the assembly. So my main point in doing this is try to drill home that an assembly is a it's a logical boundary. It's a conceptual boundary. It's a boundary that dot net enforces. Where, where, yeah, it still has the visibility rules. It can have multiple files. Generally, assemblies don't have multiple files, but they can. And, and, and there you go. So maybe I'm beating a dead horse.